All right, ladies and gentlemen, today we are back with another very interesting topic. This time it's on Rahu Ketu. The topic is if you have Rahu Ketu in the 1 7 axis in the Lagna chart or in the Navamsha, should you not get married? So, uh, now why should you not get married? Maybe there are two thoughts to this. One is, you know, you will uh, maybe likely not find somebody and you'll be always desperate. So best is not to search for somebody. Or uh, maybe the other most uh, frequently thought reason is that you will end up getting married or in a relationship and then that doesn't work. So uh, does it mean that Rahu Ketu in 1-7 axis, if you are married, you know, it can make you too attached and then later on, is it also necessary that either you are attached or not, your marriage will break. So one is, you know, going to the other extreme of attachment and the other is going into the other extreme of pain, suffering, sorrow and forced detachment. Okay, so so does it uh, actually mean uh, something? Well, it's, it's very complicated sometimes uh, to see all these things, you know, because it doesn't mean any of this because um, why do I say it's complicated? Because people just sometimes see one thing and they will like uh, generalize. Okay, so what they will say is if you have Rahu in first and Ketu in seven, so don't get married because your marriage will end in a divorce. Because they say Ketu is like, you know, the one which cuts. Okay, so it will cut your marriage. So there are people actually who think, you have Ketu in this house, it will cut this house, it will bifurcate into two. Or sometimes people also think, okay, maybe I have Ketu in this house, but uh, maybe it will give me two marriages, it will give me three marriages, you know, or four marriages, okay. Or in modern day scenario, you know, multiple relationships, okay. So, uh, what is it actually? So, does it mean, or or even if it's the other way around, you know, if it, Rahu is in seventh, it will give you uh, extra marital affair or a lack of commitment towards your spouse, you know, difficulty with polygamy and all this. So, so, uh, so, what, what is, what, what, what is it actually? You know, Rahu Ketu uh, in the one seven axis. Uh, it seems very daunting and uh, very difficult to predict sometimes. But the truth of the matter, the fact of the matter is, it is not very difficult to understand what Rahu Ketu does in the one seven axis because. Rahu Ketu's uh, thing uh, about predictions is that it has to be understood from various different parameters actually. Okay, So for example, I have a lot of videos on Rahu Ketu's results. So Rahu Ketu, they give results of a lot of houses. For example, wherever Rahu is placed in the bhav chart, he will give results of that house. Then whichever house rahu is um, whichever the the dispositor of rahu okay so for example rahu is in virgo so who is the dispositor of virgo it's uh, mercury right so now wh wh where is mercury sitting which houses which house is gemini falling on okay so gemini uh, virgo and mercury so these three houses also the results uh, will come and of course, uh, it's true for both conjunction and aspect. So if Rahu uh, is with Mercury, even then you have to see which houses uh, Virgo and Gemini is falling. Or if Rahu is aspected by Mercury, even then it happens. Okay, the same rule applies like for dispositors. Okay. So for example, if uh, Rahu is uh, in uh, Virgo, for example, and then Gemini is your seventh house. So then Rahu Dasha can also get you married. That is also possible. Okay. Then, then there is some uh, there is some possibility. Unless the sixth house is associated with it. Okay. So therefore, uh, we have to actually understand what actually Rahu Ketu is. Now, what certainly Rahu Ketu is in one sense, uh, Rahu especially can be uh, like cloud okay it's like uh, not not exactly cloud you could say you know it's like smoke okay because they can uh, sometimes make uh, things very confusing which means they can give you a sense of headlessness okay because uh, Rahu Ketu they always give you this feeling that you are not enough you need more than what you think so because of that what can happen is 
we may not appreciate what we have and because of that we may want so many other things which we actually don't necessarily need okay so it's like in case of rahu and ketu especially rahu the needs are always um, i mean the wants are always more than the needs okay so i mean it's always for everybody not just for some people or for rahu and ketu but it is uh, generically seen but especially with rahu ketu this is this is true okay so you will you will see if rahu is in the 10th house sometimes you know that uh, it can be that the person has a job but this person is like going all out and this person you know is too much obsessed with money and this person is you know losing relationships or whatever family or any any health or a spiritual life and then things uh, become a bit clouded you know as maybe you might be seeing in this video because of the agarbatti the incense that is clouding the atmosphere okay so rahu ketu you have to understand that whenever you are in rahu ketu dasha so if if you you are in this one seven axis so then what happens is you may start feeling that my life is not good enough but whenever you get that feeling you have to ask yourself well why do i feel like this that my uh, rahu ketu my life is not good enough because is it that something that i need is not getting fulfilled or is it that something that i want is not getting fulfilled so this is what can happen in the one seven axis because see the one seven axis deals with uh, you and the world actually so it's not just the spouse it, it's not you and your spouse not just it is you know you and your spouse your business partners anybody seventh house is anybody who you interact with okay because that person is directly opposite to you on a higher level on a deeper level it means the spouse because uh, the spouse is the one with whom you are interacting the most or ideally you are supposed to at least so that is why the spouse is the significator of the i mean the spouse is like the full manifestation of the seventh house okay because uh, the whatever the seventh house represents there are some people who may represent parts of it but the spouse represents everything about the seventh house in totality so that therefore seventh house is uh, said to be the house of the spouse not not that uh, just uh, it is just the house of the spouse okay so therefore we have to understand what this means okay so whenever you have rahu ketu in one seven axis check yourself and very good counseling is required if uh, you feel that you are confused in life why, why do i say counseling because your counselor your guru or your guide can sometimes show you that my dear sir my dear madam whatever you are wanting is actually your one it is not something you need okay so therefore if you feel that um, you are confused and you are desperate and you are not going anywhere in life okay then maybe you need some good counseling and good consulting uh, by some senior that person can be anybody could be um, somebody senior in your family who is experienced in life uh, not just by age but by maturity also or somebody in the spiritual community who can actually help you or some marriage counselor or some motivational speaker or some counselor in general so when you know when you get guidance from them then you understand and regarding astrology so if you see from an astrological perspective uh, if you have rahu ketu in one seven axis but somehow rahu ketu is also linked with the fifth house and the eighth house or the 12th house Uh, then there is some chance that there can be extramarital affair but again there are so many layers to this okay just because uh, you have rahu ketu linked with the fifth or eighth or 12th doesn't mean there will be an extramarital affair because uh, most likely uh, it can be that rahu's dispositor may be in the seventh uh, i mean in the fifth or eighth or 12th if rahu is in seventh okay and in the bhava chart if rahu is in the 6th house then there is a possibility that there can be a separation in marriage but again this is very broad it separation may not be divorce it can just be uh, some physical separation which can happen it can be something like you know uh, you 
you have to stay separately due to some health reason or, or whatever. It's not necessarily a marital discord, okay? Yeah, but if the Dustana houses are also linked, I mean, if the 8th and the 12th are also linked apart from the 6th, then it can actually show marital discord. Okay. So therefore, look into the overall chart and uh, if you are feeling too confused, then seek out some guidance from some senior who can actually help you because most of the times for Rahu and Ketu in the 1-7 axis, it is that one chastisement that we need from somebody who is more experienced than us. It's like one beating to the mind is required. When you get that, that's it. You are on track. Okay. So Rahu Ketu can be best uh, countered by the effects of Jupiter. So if you are confused with Rahu Ketu, then approach a Jupiterian personality and uh, that personality can surely help you to come out of this. All right. Thank you very much for your patience and do not worry if you have Rahu Ketu in 1-7 axis. Uh, just see and try to understand. And one last thing which I forgot to say is do not compare yourself with others when you have Rahu Ketu in 1-7 axis because uh, if you have Rahu in 7, there could be a tendency, oh, you are comparing your spouse to uh, uh, other people's spouse. Okay, that, that's very dangerous. Please do not do that. And if Rahu is in the first, you are comparing your entire life with others. That That's what can happen okay and if ketu is in seventh you can feel oh no, my life is so terrible you know my marriage is so terrible you know, so it, it's like a double edged sword you know there's comparison there is depression and all this so refrain from all this if by destiny something comes up then you are this that's uh, not the point of discussion here but do not do it from your side do not go into this uh, cloudy zone of confusion from your side otherwise what happens is you will uh, feel more depressed than you should have been. Okay. So therefore understand that Rahu Ketu only gives us horror movies, but it's not necessary that if you have them in 1-7 axis, uh, you will be divorced or you should get married or you will have an extramarital affair. So it depends on the chart. As I said, if you have certain combinations, uh, uh, then it can happen. But nonetheless, I am interested to know from you what is going on in your astrological research and expertise and experience and uh, your uh, knowledge about astrology regarding Rahu Ketu's 1-7 axis. So if you feel, you know, that, mm, yes, there are certain ascendants, certain placements because of which you have actually seen that this is happening, then please write it down in the comments. I would love to read them and study them and uh, understand from you also what is your experience. And certain moon signs, certain sun signs, uh, certain ascendants, if you have seen that uh, if Rahu Ketu is in 1-7 axis, the probability is higher for a divorce or an extramarital affair. Uh, and what are some of the other placements? Where is Venus in that person's chart? So please write it down in the comments. I would love to read them. Okay. Thank you very much. As usual, if you are new, then please subscribe to the channel. And if you like this video, click the thumbs up. Hopefully, after watching it till the end, as you made it till now. And if you want a consultation from me, my website is down below in the description section. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will surely find him, irrespective of where your Rahu and Ketu are placed. Thank you.